Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another video. Some say Arch Linux, even though it's not from scratch, is the ultimate do-it-yourself rolling distribution. With an extraordinary documentation set like the Arch Wiki, you will learn a huge amount about how Linux works behind the scenes, both kernel and user land, as you run through the installation guide. This is called the Arch Way, and really is the only supported method for installation. For newcomers to Arch, this can become a bit daunting, so many projects have sprung up over the years seeking to help lower the bar of entry to Arch Linux without the initial frustrations of new users. ArchBang Linux is one such project, and we're going to take a closer look at it right after this. I'll leave the ArchBang ISO download link in the description below. Let's go ahead and spin up a VM. So here's the uh, Grub menu uh, with the usual options here. We'll just go with the first one, the default one. It should serve us well. So these are the uh, standard messages for an Arch ISO boot. Nothing unusual here. And it's going to, ArchBang is taking us straight into X11 i3 Window Manager. Got a nice conky setup here. And uh, we also have a network applet. So you can configure your Wi Fi or your Ethernet as you see fit so that you have a network connection. Very handy. And here we have the uh, keyboard shortcuts from web browser through close window. Let's start with super W, which is the mod key or the Windows key. Uh, and we'll do uh, super W, but I see that's not working. Super W is not working. Let's try super T and see if it launches a terminal. That works. So the web browser shortcut does not work. Let's see what's going on here. and figure out what's what's happening. Um, let's go to the config file and edit it with Vim. So this is the i3 configuration file. Let's search for browser. And there it is. Um, so browser and move to workspace three. So it binds mod w and then it execs Firefox. So either Firefox is not starting or something else is going on. And then it moves to workspace three. Okay, so that's the desired behavior. Let's see if Firefox is even installed with which Firefox. No Firefox. Well, that should explain why mod W is not launching a browser. Firefox isn't there. Mod D or super D gives us a D menu. And looks like we do have the NetSurf web browser, very primitive, simple web browser installed. So what you can do here, if you want to install Arch Linux the Arch way, is go to archlinux.org. And then, so that's the homepage for Arch Linux, and go to Wiki. And then go down to Installation Guide. And there's the Installation Guide in all its glory. And uh, this is how you start your journey to install Arch Linux the traditional Arch way. And you can just use the side-by-side -side configuration here to copy-paste from the wiki into your LX terminal. I believe it's an LX terminal. Um, yeah, so that's very handy to have a uh, GUI Arch ISO, which is basically what ArchBang is using the i3 window manager. Anyway, let's fix the situation here with the uh, mod w shortcut. So free-h shows the standard i3 lightness, only uses 252 megabytes of RAM. So sudo vim etsy pacman.de mirror list uh, gets us into the repo list. And uh, we'd like to uncomment the worldwide mirrors so we can install packages that we need, including Firefox. So now that's done. We can do this by typing sudo pacman-s, lowercase y, neofetch, because I like it, 
and Firefox. And that'll pull in the dependencies. We'll stick with the default here, all defaults, and proceed with the installation. So the uh, worldwide mirrors are doing well today for my loca location. Okay, so let's clear the terminal and type NeoFetch. So as you can see, we're running a pretty vanilla Arch Linux here. Uh, slightly older kernel, 5.18.8, uh, 505 Pac-Man packages. The theme is Archbang Summer i3 edition. And yes, indeed, we're running LX Terminal. Okay, so there you go. That's for your reference. Um, so let me... Um, Close the terminal here. Let's try super w or mod w. And sure enough, um, we've got a new workspace here, workspace three. So if I select it with mod three, I should switch over to it. And there is Firefox in workspace three. So let's test Firefox quickly with going to archlinux.org. And uh, looks like it's working properly, the wiki is here and so is the installation guide so we can use we can now use firefox instead of netsurf if you want to uh, use the installation guide along with your arch install all right so i see here we've got mod i or super i launches the install script for arch bang so let's do that um, mod i and that launches the LX terminal again. Let's make it a little bigger. So this is the uh, a shell script, basically. So let's select one for partition scheme. Let's do a default partition scheme and select GDisk as my partition program because I want a UEFI install. DevVDA is the target disk. So let's create a new partition with N. Default, first sector, last sector would be plus 600 megabytes for the UEFI boot partition. And uh, that would be code EF00, hex code. Then a new partition, the second and final partition will be the rest of the disk, and that will be the Linux root file system. So there we go, just two partitions, really simple. I'll keep it simple in this video. Let's write the partition table. And we want to proceed, yes. Okay, so it's asking, where is the root partition? The root partition is dev VDA2, so I select 2 here. Confirm format for VDA2, yes. And I like to format it to ext4 instead of the usual butterfs for rolling partition, uh, rolling uh, uh, distro. And the EFI partition is dev VDA1, and I like to install it in slash boot slash EFI. That's usually a good default. So yes, go ahead. Format it with FAT32. We'll skip the swap uh, creation today. Uh, I usually use ZRAM generator anyway uh, for my production Arch uh, Linux installs. So number two is uh, actually doing the installation. And what it does, the uh, shell script for ArchBang install is it uses rsync, among other things, to um, copy, basically, uh, the AI root file system over to the target disk. The AI root file system, of course, is the Arch ISO uh, file system, so it's copying the live image over to the disk. That's all it's doing, basically. All right, so it's done already. So number three, we'll set the host name. I'll call it archbang or ab-1. Four is the location, so we are in the United States or US, which is 56. And the subzone is the Pacific. I'm in the Pacific time zone, so that's 11. US Pacific is correct, so why? Location, it asks again, I guess, so United States, which is 68. And yes, we confirm the location, United States, for myself. And option five 
is uh, the hardware clock, which I'll set to universal time coordinated or UTC, local time if you're dual booting with Windows. Six would be the locale, um, and I'm looking for in underscore US, which would be 93. Yes, confirm locale. So it generates the locales, and then it generates the initial RAM disk environment, which happens very quickly. Seven, desktop keyboard layout would be a US key map. So that would be 95. U.S. keyboard, U.S. key map. Yes. Cool. Eight for the bootloader. We'll use the standard grub, so I'll just choose option one here. And we'll do an automatic install since we're not doing multi-boot. That is that. So root has no password by default, so option nine allows you to set the root password, which I highly recommend, so let's do that here. And uh, 10, lastly, we'll set a new username. So I'm Steven, obviously, and uh, I give myself a new password, type it twice for good measure. And there it goes. Okay, enter to continue. Looks like we've taken care of all the steps, one through 10. So D for done. Reboot system, yes, why not? So we're rebooting. There we go. That's the standard grub menu for the installed Arch system. And there's our login prompt, Steven. And my password, super secret. And here we go. So we have a nice conky setup here with keyboard shortcut reminders. Super W, of course, doesn't work again because we haven't installed Firefox yet, but you know how to fix that, right? Nice wallpaper. A nice basic i3 window management, window manager uh, arch install um, for your further explorations and, and experimentations. ArchBang is indeed one of the simplest gateways to the world of Arch Linux, warts and all. That said, I can't really recommend it over, say, SNICS's Easy Archer project, which offers a much more polished learning experience. I find it at least as gentle as ArchBang with much better attention to detail, even though Easy Archer is a single person project as well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and do smash the like button, share with friends and neighbors, and subscribe so you won't miss upcoming videos. Until next time, have a lot of fun and take care.